where have you guys been oh my goodness you gotta stop disappearing on me for all these times <laughs> all right guys so we live off grid in that log cabin right there my wife and i we live 100 percent off rainwater and today we're going to walk you through our whole system the reason why i'm going to do it today it might be a little windy um, but it's because it's raining and i want to show you guys how the system operates okay so i'm going to show you how we collect it and then how it runs through our system and then how we use it okay so don't go anywhere it's going to be action-packed if you want to live off grid or even if you want a homestead and you want to have a a self-sufficient water system a lot of you guys are out there you're on wells that needs power if the power goes out you don't have a well to pump um, if you're on solar well pumps are a big draw so that is a thing to consider right there with this system there's no power there's no pump it's no problem let gravity do the work water takes the path of least resistance we've been on this system now for four this is our fifth year um, it works fantastic and we use this rainwater 100% and here we go. We're gonna walk you through the whole system now. So this gutter right here is on each side of this barn that we have. This is the largest barn that we have on the property, but every building on our off-grid property collects rainwater. See, even right there, we got a little blue barrel right there for some runoff. Whatever doesn't go down that gutter and end up in the rain catchment ends up in there and we use that for the chickens that are right there. See how that works? So we always have water on hand here and there, okay? And there are some things you need to do in the summertime if you're gonna have the system, um, you know, so you can take precautions if you get mosquitoes bad in your area or whatever, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys, this is the main barn. It's where all the magic happens. And then this right here is the little sheep barn that I gotta clean up. But as you can see, even this little bitty shed here collects rainwater. Now the reason why it's not really collecting right now is because we're coming out of winter and we don't use these in the winter time, those tanks you've seen there. We go to our tried and true tanks which operate the whole homestead, 11 acres, for all of our livestock and everything else. Looks like you got some water on your face. Let me get you cleaned up, I'll take you inside, show you where all the water, oops. This is the other side of the barn. Ha, almost forgot. Same gutter system, five inch gutter, a little bit of a drop all the way down to the end. Now I'll wipe your face off, take you inside. All right, so what I was able to do is I was able to incorporate my water room inside this barn, which is actually where my horse stalls are. Okay, we have a couple horses here. Hold on, wait for the light to adjust. And so our horses are right here in these stalls, and this is their run-in shelter that they use. Uh, you know, inclement weather, weather and uh, you know, if it's snowing outside or whatever. Right now, they don't mind standing out in the rain. They enjoy it, so they stand out in the rain or they come inside here. So inside this room that I built from all the scrap tin that I had laying around is the water tank setup. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys what all that looks like. Now when you have a rainwater collection system, you want to have a first flush diverter. Okay, a first flush diverter. Um, what that means is the first rain that lands on the roof of the structure that you're collecting water on goes into a separate containment area. So what happens, all that dirt and pollen and bird poop and everything that's on your roof goes into a separate containment area. And when the volume of that roof, it's all about calculations, um, has had like one inch or two inches worth of water on it, that's how you size your first flush, okay? So then after the first one or two inches of water, everything after that is clean and it goes into your system, okay? So we sized our First flush diverter. Uh, this is 150 gallons. This is 150 gallons. Man, it's been so long. Don't forget. Yeah. 150 gallons. <laughs> I thought my memory served me well. <laughs> But at the same time, I don't want to put out any bad information for you guys, so I wanted to double check. So it's 150 gallons. 150 gallons, this fills up to the top, okay? Comes in through right here. Right here on the other side of this is a T. That's where I showed you outside. The water comes in, goes into this, fills up this tank. When this tank fills up, it backs up through this pipe. And then the water now that's coming in right here is clean because it can't go inside there. And then it starts funneling off this way and into this tank right here okay and this is just a little something i put on there 
uh, to keep this pipe up and also to keep it, uh, you know, from the dirt getting in there because there's screens on top of these tanks, mosquito screens. And so I put those on top of it as well just to keep the dust and whatever little junky junk gets in there from, uh, you know, from being in this room, okay? Now we have a 3,000 gallon setup. 3,000 gallons, my, my wife and I, the guests that we have, all the traffic we have through here, operating the homestead, uh, animals through the winter time. We have no problem maintaining the whole homestead with guests, animals, and everything with our 3,000 gallon setup. Isn't this fun? You guys are gonna learn all about rainwater catchment. Now these are 1,500 gallon tanks. I have two of them. We have 3,000 gallons of capacity uh, to store our rainwater in, okay? You're gonna have to figure out what your capacity needs to be because every place is different. We have friends that live in the desert and they collect rainwater. They get about an inch or two a year. So they have to have a lot of capacity and storage because they only get one shot. We get about 40 or 50 inches a year, so we don't need a lot of capacity because we get a lot of frequent rain. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is how much water do you waste, right? One of the beauties about our system is we had a pause in between when we first got here versus when we put our system in place where we were trying to figure out how we were actually gonna do this water setup. Were we gonna put a well in? Or was I gonna use a cistern system? I actually started uh, digging a hole for a cistern, if you could believe it. Uh, me and my friend Noe, he's an Amish guy, and we started digging the hole. We got down about 10 feet, about 10 feet wide, 10 feet down. And uh, we I don't know why we started this project in uh, spring, uh, but we did you know, over by the, uh, actually by the uh, log cabin where we put in the root cellar. That's why the ground was a little bit compromised there. That's why we had some of the issues that we had while we were building that. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> that actually caved in. So we abandoned that and I thought there's gotta be a better way. We were gonna line it with limestone and you know, this old school stuff. And then I really started digging in and I came up with this gravity fed rainwater catchment system just by educating myself on how everything works, talking to a few people that could mentor me and help me along. And then we came up with this system. Now the nice thing about this system is the low cost of entry. You guys can set up a rainwater catchment system that can supply you with all your water needs um, for just a couple thousand dollars. I mean, we're probably into this system around 34, 3,500 bucks. That includes all the pipe, the hydrants outside, which I'm going to take you guys out and show you. Um, everything in here, the first flush, the whole nine, which is way cheaper uh, than putting in a well. Like I said, wells around here are north of $20,000 with no guarantee you'll hit water and no guarantee of the quality of water. So just think about it. Do your homework. Don't believe anything I say. Trust but verify. 3,000 gallons, all gravity fed. And now, Here's the big trick too. I know I'm just rambling on, but I want to get you guys all this information in this video. Because a lot of you guys send me questions about this stuff too. So I'm just kind of knocking it all out. The one problem that we had because we live in a four season climate was the weather, okay? So I built this room, I elevated the floor. You know, this floor is probably two feet-ish above the normal floor of the building. And I did that so I could get a little more height. The hot, higher you can put your tanks, the more pressure that you're gonna get, okay, at the end zone. Um, so I was trying to keep this room warm. You know, the first year wasn't too bad. I had some, um, I think I had a propane tank in here. No, I had the wood stove. I put a barrel stove in here. That was what I did first. That was terrible because they're not airtight. And then I was getting up during the night. I had to come up here and check it, you know? So that was a lot of times this room would fill up with smoke. It was totally bogus. So I said, there's gotta be a better way. I pulled out all the pipe and the stove and everything. And then I started going with like a kerosene heater and uh, some propane heaters. And that worked good the following year. So that was no problem. I was like, okay, I think we got this. And then the next year came and man, we got some really cold temperatures. It was like negative three, negative four Fahrenheit for like two weeks, you know, really put us to the test. I had two propane heaters, a kerosene heater, and it's not the tanks that are freezing up. I want you to understand because there's a lot of volume in these tanks. 1500 gallons is a lot of volume. It's the ball valves and these connector pipes. That's your weak link, right? So those were freezing up and busting and causing me issues. I lost a ball valve on one, uh, the um, outlet on the way out froze one time. So we had a lot of issues with that. There were times where we were in the middle of winter without water. Um, 
So we spray foamed in this whole room. I have a video about it. I'll leave it down in the comments section for you guys. You can check it out. It turned out really good. I want you to see the process. But once I spray foamed in the room and made it airtight and added this insulation, now we just barely run a propane tank on super low uh, just for an hour or two and it'll raise the temperature up in here and we've had zero problems and we just came off last year it was really cold um, and this year wasn't too bad but we had some pretty we had a couple zeros uh, we've had no problem with the water so it took me a couple years to get it dialed in but now we have a bulletproof system okay now I'm gonna take you guys outside I'm gonna show you how the uh, overflow works outside and then we're gonna trace down the lines I'm gonna show you the lawn hydrants um, that we use to feed our uh, water our livestock with. Now we're back outside. So as those tanks fill up, this is our overflow tank, okay? Remember I told you guys, never paint your tanks black. I got a video about that. Go find it good information on why you don't paint your tanks black but not a reason I stated was because the black always comes off and you always got to repaint it so there you go but you can see the water's coming out right now it goes into this tank and then this is just you know if I wanted to put another tank here whatever size or you know grow the system you could do that I could bump this building out and put another piece here and put another big tank here I have room at the other end I could put more in so the nice thing about the system too is that you can build it if you need more you can add to it very easily right now we don't use these tanks in the winter do not use your IBC tanks if it gets cold outside if you have them outside like this no matter how much you plan on being a good steward of it and watching it and you know that ball valve is gonna bust don't ask me how I know okay several years we operated with just this as our water source and uh, right now um, we're gonna close these off now to where they can operate right now they're open you can see the water just coming out and that's just because you don't want to get those things frozen because those ball valves will bust and then they'll be useless when you actually really need them you know I don't really need them that much in the winter time so all right so you got the point it's a pretty big building as you can see now I'm gonna show you guys the lawn hydrants all right oh here let me let me take you back over here for a second kind of give you a rundown on how I put the pipes in the ground uh, storage is on the other side of this wall the pipe comes into the ground on the other side of this wall and then it goes in the ground from here right and then it goes all the way down this way to that barn you can see the hydrant there and then about halfway down I teed off and I went because I knew we were going to have a hydrant in the garden and the pipes are in the ground you have to figure out what your frost level is your frost line in your area and then you have to bury those pipes lower than the frost line uh, so you can have that water flowing right if you don't have them below the frost line they'll get frozen up and they'll stop on you so that's a fact Jack and now we can get water delivered all the time now we'll go over here and show you the garden now we're just having fun stomping through the rain today hanging out in the rain ha got my galoshes on Jeez, oh. Garden's not getting any activity because it's raining outside. I, honestly, we just had snow too. So the snow just melted. We had like two nice days, and now we have all this rain. It's like a lot of rain. Oh, yeah. There's the flying pigs. Ha! Remember, this is all gravity fed. I had some of my farm buddies over here the other day and earlier too. And then when they come over, I always show them the water system because it's boss. Um, and because I always like to show them how the water comes out of these hydrants. And when I tell them that it's gravity fed rainwater, then they all start cracking their brains and they're trying to figure out they're going to put up sheds like out as run ins in their pastures, right? And put a collection system in like this. And then that way they can just, you know, put a float valve on the water or they can just go out and it's a lot easier uh, to manage. You don't have to put miles and miles and miles of pipe out there uh, to collect water to get it delivered to the space when you can actually just put a run in up it's a dual purpose and then you have a, a roof and a run in for your animals and then you collect that rainwater uh, and 
you could just have a system like I showed you with the uh, IBC totes for them. Uh, that's great during the summertime, but in the wintertime, you could deliver a system like this where it's all on the uh, ground, or you could even put a big tank in the ground and then you could store your water in the ground and pump it up like this. But the gravity fed stuff is the boss. But I'm gonna show you guys how this uh, operates. Now these hydrants, they actually go into the ground and there's a little bitty weep hole down at the bottom. A lot of people, when they watch our channel, they always ask how come these hydrants don't freeze up? And that's why, because they have that little bitty weep hole down at the bottom of this pipe, which allows all the water to drain out after you turn it off. So let me show you guys how much water comes out of this thing. Wow. So see what I mean? I mean, that's all gravity fed, no problem, good stuff. Right here, 24-7, 365. I'll take you over and show you the other one by the sheet. And here's the other hydrant. It works exactly the same way. And I just got a, had a repair there. Our Rambo, our ram sheep there, uh, he got a hold of that thing rubbing up against it and knocked it out of whack. So I had to get a repair on there. So I'll get some more dirt around that. But everything works like a dream. That's the beauty of it. You get it in the ground and then it's all gravity fed and you just have to make sure that your supply is uh, higher than your demand. Ha! <laughs> uh, that's the complete opposite if you're running a business. You want to make sure your demand is higher than your supply. All right, let me go show you guys what's going on inside the cabin so you can see that the uh, system actually works and it can deliver the water uh, to the spigot inside at the sink. Okay, so I know you guys are asking, you're like, well, so how do you take a shower and how do you take a bath? We don't really do baths around here. We're shower people. So we have, uh, like I said, every building collects rainwater. This building is our outdoor kitchen and we set this up. I built a whole rainwater catchment system here and this operates our off-grid shower that we use in the summertime. So like all the other outside tanks during the winter time, they're drained and they're not operational. Uh, then when the spring and summer comes, these fill up and we use this for taking our shower um, all through the summer. That's our shower head right there that I made. Good video on that too. You guys are missing all these good videos. Now I wanna explain to you something on what we're gonna do for hot showers real quick. And then we'll go inside and I'll show you guys how it operates inside the log cabin. Now right now we're inside the building that we just built. That's gonna be our hot water heater. It's an Amish hot water heater. We have a video on that. <laughs> and this is the shower that we put in. This is gonna be a hot water shower. That's just some insulation that's just kind of hanging out right now. Um, but the, all that water that you guys have seen, I actually plumbed it into this building and it's gonna be gravity fed for a shower here and for the hot water setup right there. So this right here is gonna be a a shower with the hot water shower for the winter time so we can stay clean during the winter time i'm going to be hooking that up so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to our channel so you guys can see these videos coming out and when we get this stuff hooked up and you can see how this stuff works endless hot water like we'll have no problem with hot water forever no heat elements no electricity no drain on the solar power which we don't even have yet we haven't even finished hooking up the solar power that's on this building so much to do guys, I tell you. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to show you that this is a shower right here that we're gonna be able to use pretty soon, hot water shower for the winter time. Now, let's go inside the cabin. This is the crawl space underneath the house. This is where we were actually keeping our food storage when we first started doing food storage. And I got some shelves built over there that actually have some canned food on it uh, that we started when we first started getting out here. So we got canned food over there that's been up there for years. But this is the last stop um, in the system before it gets delivered to the kitchen sink, okay? Let me show you what it looks like. This is the pipe that comes up out of the ground. That's the delivery system. It goes through here to a three-stage filtering system, okay? We have a carbon filter and two threaded filters. And these threaded filters are different microns. All right, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I have to find my stash. <laughs> okay. Now these are called threaded filters, okay? 
So you can see, I don't know if you can really see it. See it? It's just like some string. See how it is? And that's what you call a threaded filter. And then there's the bigger one. And then they're gauged in microns. This is one micron, so that's pretty small. So it's going to stop any of the dirt, debris, contaminants, and stuff like that that come through your water system. Now the carbon filter, that's what you're going to be um, using. You know, that's going to, just going to take out like odor and other kind of elements. That's what that looks like. And the carbon filter is what this looks like right here. See? Basically just a black carbon filter. Um, I don't care about any particular brand or anything. Um, we basically are going through one carbon filter a year and then the threaded filters are like two years, possibly three. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to really replace them that much. The reason why I have to replace the carbon filter sooner is because it does the most work. That's why it's first and it really cleans out the stuff and once the carbon filter starts getting caked up, it restricts the flow to the whole system. So if you're at the kitchen sink and the water's coming out kind of slow or you're noticing a decline, then you'll know that it's about time to change your filter. And a lot of that depends on you know how well your first flush is operating and if there was any contaminants in the line so when i built this system and we put it together i went through a few carbon filters pretty fast up front because the lines were washing out there was some dirt and debris in there and now after that i'm like I say going through about one carbon filter a year and you can just replace the threaded filters as you feel comfortable with replacing them or as they need it as you see the water restrict so it might be even a good idea just to replace um, that filter maybe two years for sure uh, just to kind of get it out of that water and get a new one on there and the filters are super cheap so no problem with that we also always stock up you guys are seeing what's going on in the news and all that stuff what have we been teaching you guys if you've been subscribed to our channel again if you haven't hit that subscribe button make sure you do and make sure you turn on that bell for notifications so you can get notified when we put up these videos because we've been kind of random lately you don't want to miss a single one because we really try on all of our videos to give you guys information that you can actually use okay and now we're going to go upstairs to the faucet and i'll show you guys how that works so I basically just crafted together a little spigot um, out of some PVC pipe and a spigot that I got, it, like I said, at the big box store. And this is the pressure that comes out of it, all gravity fed, you can see. That's plenty good pressure. All right, so there you guys have it. I played in the rain with you. I took you around. I showed you how our whole system works. I took you to all the places where we collect water. I showed you how it gets to the house, comes out of the spigot. Stay tuned for videos on how it's gonna come out of the hot water shower. And it's all gravity fed, guys. These systems have been in place for thousands of years. They've been using gravity fed water all around the globe to deliver water to places where it's needed. So hopefully you guys got some good information from this off-grid video about some water catchment. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I do my best to answer the questions. Otherwise, try to make it to one of the conferences that we go to, the Homesteading Life Conference. Um, that's in August, the first Sunday and Monday in August, homesteadinglifeconference.com. And that's a great place to go to, to learn a lot of this stuff hands-on. We'll have people there talking about living off-grid. We'll have people talking about homesteading, preserving food, all the stuff that we're doing and showing you on a daily basis you can get hands-on training with. So homesteadinglifeconference.com. Otherwise, follow us on Facebook. Keep up with all the places that we're gonna be at. So if you wanna come out and hang out with us, you can hang out with us. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the next video.